Hello, this is a video tutorial for a piece called Arioso. It's from this book, the current Grade 5 Trinity Violin book, and it's on page 14 of the um, violin part. This uses a number of different positions and some quick semi quaver runs. Notice that there are F sharps and C sharps in the key signature. Now we're going to divide this into three sections. The first section, section A, goes from where you start playing up to the end of bar 13. Section B starts from bar 14 and goes up to the start of bar 26. And then section C is from there to the end. Section A and section C are very similar. There's a lot the same about both of those sections. Now you're going to find F sharp in third position on the A string, three fingers in third position on the A string, spaced out with the tone in between each finger. And it goes, that's the beginning bit, F sharp, E, F sharp. Then hop your third finger over onto the D string. There's your B. Don't take your other fingers with you though because it needs to go from B to D, which is your first finger where it is on the A string. So there's no point in moving that. And then you will go to that F sharp again. We're going to do something different with that F sharp in a minute, but I'd like you to start off going like that. And we'll think about the counting. One, two, three, four. Two, three. That's the counting. The tied note may look confusing to start with, but if you think that the first three notes all come in the first beat and the B doesn't come until halfway through the third beat, it makes it easier to think about. So again, two, three, four. Two, three. And now for the different thing we're going to do with that F sharp. You're going to play the B, the D, and then slide into fourth position so you've got a second finger on that F sharp. So when you play that first bar, it will go and you put your second finger where your third finger has just been. For the next bar, stay in fourth position, put your third finger next to your second finger because G is only a semitone away from F sharp. The A goes out like that with your little finger and then finger two for F sharp, finger one for E and it will go So here are bars three and four. One, two, three, four. Now for the next two bars, it's a very similar shape, but you stay in third position instead of shifting into fourth. And at the end of bar six, you move down into first position. So here, are the next two bars. Starts the same with the F sharp, E, F sharp. So after the F sharp, E, F sharp, you hop over to G, first finger on the D string, three fingers for that B again, and then back to the D. Two for E, three for F sharp, slide back into first, D, C sharp to finish with. So here are your first four bars of section A. One, two, three, four. Now we're coming 
coming into the bit with the semiquaver runs, it starts off with an octave leap, first finger to fourth finger on B. The first finger B is written as a small note, it's only an ornament. It's got a tiny line through it, so it is an acciacatura, it's literally a squashed note. Just play it fast. The high B is the important note there. And then we come to the semiquavers. Ten semiquavers all in one bow. You're probably going to want to split them up while you learn them. So play them separate bows to start with. You'll notice that I played the E in two different places. The first E I would play as an open string because it keeps it on that string. The second E, the last one of the semiquavers, I would play it as a fourth finger note because it keeps it on that string and you don't have to switch strings quickly. When you can do it happily in separate bows, do them two to a bow. And then do them in their groups and then see if you can play them all in one up bow. It will be an up bow because the previous note has been a down bow. Keep them moving and then you won't run out of bow. You might want to take this opportunity to practice the, the next two um, bunches of semiquavers as well. Do it in the same way, separate bows and then join them up bit by bit. This is the uh, group of semiquavers at the end of line two. And I'm doing the same thing with the E's. The first one is an open string, the second one is a fingered E. And the semiquavers in line three It's the same thing with the E's. The first one will be an open string. The second one will be a fourth finger E. Notice that you finish on an A sharp, which is first finger back on the A string. When you're joining these up, notice that there are some quaver rests. After the lowest note, when you finish the semiquaver run, there is a little semiquaver rest as a breath before you go into the next bit. I think that this may have been written originally for a woodwind instrument, so that's possibly where they would have taken their breaths. So let's see if we can play the whole of that semiquaver run bit, starting from bar seven. One, two, three, four. bit you need to go back into third position so find your third position with your first finger four three two three it will be quiet that bit. so let's play the whole of section a one two three four And this might be a good time to talk about vibrato. This is a piece that you would try to use vibrato in. Vibrato is when you wobble your hand like that and it wobbles the note. Sometimes we say it warms the note up. 
when we're starting we do tend to save it for long notes and emphasized notes so that last note we probably have some vibrato on it keep your hand really really relaxed keep this joint loose keep that joint loose keep your hand relaxed the more relaxed you are the better it will work now we're going on to section b you have three bars rest before that starts and you'll start in third position again your bar where you start in section b goes watch out for the rhythm there's that little tied note in the beginning of the in the in the middle of the slur and in the next bar you'll aim for the d that's in the middle of the bar back in first position so you start in third position and aim for the d with your third finger so this is bars 17 and 18 leading into the first note of bar 19. More semiquavers in bar 19, down bow, they're slightly more split up though. So make sure you do the bow change in the right place when you've got used to where those semiquavers are. The E's are the other way around. The first one is a, a fourth finger E, the second one is an open string E because the notes are going upwards rather than and down. In bar 20 you've got a change of position in the middle of a slur. So it will go Slide your second finger from the G up to third position to the B. This is somewhere where I would definitely practice it with separate bows. Before I started joining things up and then join them up in pairs and in fours so that you can get used to that shift. And here are bars 19 and 20. From bar 22, I would do that bit in first position. Now you've got some F naturals, C naturals and B flats. So your first finger will be back towards the head of the violin your second finger will be in closed position. Your first finger will be back for the B flat. So here is the bit starting from bar 22. sharp for the end of that phrase. Be careful with the counting, especially in bar 22, but it is the same rhythm as you had at the beginning. And here's the whole of section B. section C almost all of it is the same as section A except the last line when you get up to the end of bar 37 into the beginning of bar 38 that is then a rest it's like it breaks off and your part has a sudden silence 
you continue in third position. So here are the last three notes out of bar 37 continuing into the end. So it will go one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. into first position and if you can do vibrato on those last few notes all the better your strongest fingers for vibrato will be your second finger and your third finger you may find it easier to take other fingers off while you're doing the vibrato but as you get better you're going to be able to keep the fingers down and do vibrato with those fingers on now, when you play it with the accompaniment, the accompaniment is very helpful because a lot of it has a crotchet beat actually there in the accompaniment. It makes it very easy for you to count to it. The only place that I would say that you need to be very careful is when you come in at bar 22. Be careful with the counting at that point. Everywhere else, it seems obvious at that point. You just need to be careful. Thank you. 